right. Good to see everybody here today. God bless you. It's so good to see everybody. Those who are joining, joining us online, we're just so glad that you're here. Welcome. Uh, today is an exciting day. We are starting a new series called The Change Series. But um, recently we just ended a series called The Art of Neighboring. And I just want to encourage you, though the series is over, our responsibility to our neighbors are, is not... And so uh, just continue to reach out to your neighbors. And if you have the refrigerator magnet, the checkboard of, of your neighbors, continue to use that and pray for your neighbors. And uh, uh, God's going to do great things. So let's continue to love our neighbors. But today we're embarking on a series entitled The Change Series, Embracing or Resisting Change. And uh, change is a powerful little word. It encompasses so much. Uh, change is defined as uh, to become different, to make different, to become something else, to replace, to move. So it, in order for change to happen, something different has to take place. Change can never mean staying the same. So if you're taking notes today, every life needs change. You can find the notes in the back of the bulletin. Every life needs change. Change happens to every single person. From the youngest to the oldest, change happens. Change can be both negative and positive, both good and bad. By its very nature, change is disruptive. Change disrupts things. Change disrupts the, the status quo. It disrupts what's going on, the normal. It, it changes things. Because change is different, it disrupts things. Now, there are many different kinds of change, and some have put change into three different categories. They are develop, developmental change, transitional change, and transformational change. Developmental, transitional and transformational. At one season or another, every life goes through one of these types of change. Developmental and transitional change are a routine part of life. Growth, education, occupation, these things just happen on a regular basis. But transformational change is anything but routine. It happens less frequently, but its implications and impact shape our life, our destiny, our future. Transition is what Christian, Christ, excuse me, transformation is what Christianity is all about. It is changing into the best you. God made you unique. He made you on purpose. He put inside of you everything you need to be to fulfill your destiny, to fulfill your purpose. But what Christianity does, it, it takes what, what you are and it transforms you into the best possible you ever. So inside of you is everything you need, but Jesus makes you who you, you, who you were purposed to be. When Michelangelo was making his famous sculpture, David. Somebody, when he was finished, somebody asked him how he created such a magnificent sculpture. And, and, Ma and Michelangelo said, he said, I just simply removed what wasn't supposed to be there. I just removed the, the stone until David appeared. And this is what Christianity does. It removes what's not supposed to be there until you become who God purposed you to be. Isn't that amazing? He, God is the master sculptor. God is the master creator. He doesn't make mistakes. And so he's put inside of you everything you need to become the best you. And he simply removes things that are not supposed to be there so that you can become the best version of you possible. In Deuteronomy 31 is the story uh, is of Joshua and Moses. Joshua was about to go through one of the biggest transformations of his life. 
he was about to go from a follower to a leader. That's a big change. A follower just has to simply follow somebody who's leading, and they they have to be loyal, and they have to, to trust, and all those things. But when you're a leader, you have to make the decisions. You, everything that that happens falls on your shoulders. Now Moses had led the people of Israel out of Egypt and through the wilderness. They're on the brink of the promised land and now Moses was going to hand over this leadership to his servant, to his follower Joshua. And Joshua was about to step into his destiny, into the place into the person that God had designed from the beginning for him to be. And now was the time, and now the responsibility of leading and caring for the people of Israel was now transitioning to him. Now the responsibility of leading, the responsibility of caring for the nation, the responsibility for hearing from God for the nation rests on his shoulders. Now Moses, the outgoing leader, who knows all about stepping into leadership and how to, uh, the, the weight and the care of leadership uh, is, he, ch- he uh, gives a challenge to Joshua in Deuteronomy 38. He says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Moses, who knew what, what the challenge was of leadership, was speaking to Joshua. Joshua, I know this is scary. I know you haven't been here before. I know the weight that it is to lead a people. I know what it is to, to go from a non-leader to a leader. But let me tell you something. It's the Lord who goes before you. It's the Lord who's already walked out your steps. It's the Lord who puts you in this position. It's the Lord who goes before you, and he will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And in life, when change happens, when uh, we are on the brink of transformation, when you're on the brink of your victory, when you're on the brink of becoming who God wants you to do, sometimes, most of the time, there is fear. And if you're taking notes, it's only natural to resist change. It's a natural response out of fear and other, other factors to resist change. Change. Joshua was about to assume this leadership over a people who had a history of rebelling. They had a history of rioting. They had a history of complaining. And I don't know, all the parents here in the room, that's the one thing that I hate the most is complaining. Just eat your food. No, really, just eat your food. Just, just eat it. Here, let me help you. <laughs> eat your food. <laughs> And so this nation who was, had a history of being unruly, who said they loved God and would follow God. And, and uh, I, I love this. When, when Moses handing over the leadership to Joshua, the people said, As we were with Moses, so we will be with you. And these were the very people who tried to stone Moses. Just as we were with Moses, we're, we're behind you. We might kill you, but we're with you. And so on the brink of change, it's only natural sometimes to resist it. Joshua is told several times in this transition not to fear. Several more times to be courageous and strong. People resist change when they misunderstand the need or the reason for change. People resist change when, uh, when they have the fear of the unknown. They resist change when they think the old way is better. They resist change when they have a low level of trust. They resist change when security is risked. They resist change when the benefit is unknown or unclear, or they resist change when they fear that they won't succeed, that they don't have enough to succeed. 
One of the fears the children of Israel had was this fear of not being able to succeed. They said, there's giants in the land, and we're but grasshoppers in their eyes. How can we change? How can we inherit the promised land? People resist change because of fear. Now, when we have these feelings, it is easy to get it stuck in our head to resist change. But we are just one change. We're just a change away from meeting your destiny. Transformational change is hard. That's why we resist it. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Everyone would be awesome. Everybody would be this stellar Christian and, and doing everything that they're supposed to do and meeting their destiny, and it would be awesome. But because it's hard, we resist it. We challenge it. We question it. Say, well, if it, w- if it was supposed to be, it would just happen. No, that's, that's not how transformation works. Transformation is hard. Transformation is a choice. Transformation is scary because the outcome is unknown. And we might say, I might not be where I need to be in Jesus, but I know how to live the way I am. It's comfortable. It's something I know. So I'm just going to stay here because it's easier. And I can deal with the devil I know rather than the devil I don't. And so we stay exactly the same rather than becoming the person that God has created us to be. If we live only for comfort, it will kill, it will destroy our potential and it will keep us from reaching the destiny that God has for us. We must remember that God wants us to win. God wants us to be changed. He doesn't want us to stay the same. Friends, Romans 8, 31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? even the person looking back to us in the mirror. If God is for us, we don't have to worry about our, our, our safety or our security. But if God is for us, we can triumph. We can become who he wants us to be. So if you're taking notes, notes today, godly choices, excuse me, godly change produces transformation. Godly change produces transformation transformation. Romans 8 29 says, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. He's predestined us to be like Christ, to be conformed to the image of his son, to be transformed from where we are now into the image of Jesus Christ. We who are following Jesus are being transformed. We are being conformed. We are being changed into the image of Christ. We are like clay being pressed into a form, and that form is Jesus. And in this process, transformation happens. But we have to decide how pliable are we going to be? How soft and moldable malleable is our heart are we going to be hard to form it and through life situation being pressed into that form and not changing but maybe there's an indentation but not being malleable and it's a struggle or do we allow the holy spirit to mold us to shape us to be like uh putty in his hands, to be like moldable clay, to be take on the image of Christ? Will we be what God wants for our lives, or will we resist? Will we embrace it or resist it, what God wants us to be? If we resist, we will not fit into this mold. We will not be who Christ intended us for be, um, to be. If we insist on our own way, transformation cannot happen. 
if we insist on our own will and our own way, we will not be shaped into the image of Christ. But if we are malleable, if, if we are soft to, towards the things of God, if we are able to, to listen and obey and be transformed, and be, we will be shaped into the image of Christ and transformation will happen. Now, transformation is not an immediate event. Transformation is a process. Transformation takes time because just from personal experience, one part of my heart is soft and malleable and wants everything that God wants for me. And the other side of my heart or other chambers of my heart doesn't want to be transformed, wants my way, wants my selfish desires, wants what I want and want it now. And so just the nature of humanity and where we are, it takes time to be transformed. But if we allow the process to happen, we can be conformed into the image of Christ. He has made it possible for our hearts to be formed into his image and into his likeness. I don't know about you, but, but uh, the longer that I'm with Jesus, the more I'm like him. Now, I didn't say I'm perfect. I said I'm more like him than I was yesterday. But if we continue in this process, we will be transformed. We will become who God wants us to be. It is, a, it is not an easy process. It's, sometimes it's a painful process, but it is a transformational process and it takes time. If you're taking notes today, transformational change is a faith thing. Change is a faith thing. It takes faith to believe that God has something better for you. It takes faith to step out and to do something different it takes faith to believe that God will be with you as you go forward. It takes faith to believe that God has placed something inside of you that he can use. Do you know that God has placed his gifts and callings over your life? And he has a plan and he has a purpose and he has a destiny for you to walk in. God, is, he has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so that you can be to the praise of his glory so that when people say, see you and see what God has done in you, they say, man, there must be a God. There must be a powerful God. I knew Brandon before, and look at what God has done in his life. Yeah? It's funny, and it's true. Right? I knew that rascal before. I knew the way he used to act. I knew the way he used to talk. I knew how he used to treat people. But there is something different now. It's a transformational change. This metamorphosis of becoming who God intended us to be. And it takes faith to believe. God has called us into a transformational change. He's created you for more than where you're at now. He's created you to experience more of him than where you are now. I don't care if you're Mother Teresa. You're not where God wants you to be. There is more of God for you. There's more that God wants to do in you. There's more that God wants to do through you. There's more that God wants to create inside of you. And friends, let me tell you, it's available more. There's more available. There's more of God for you. There's more that's waiting for you. The gifts and callings of God. He has already spoken over you, but he's waiting for you to walk in them. He's calling you out this morning. Say, I've got something more for you. I've got something better for you. I've got life for you. I've got healing. I've got restoration for you. I've got transformation for you. Hallelujah. I don't know what your view of God is. But let me tell you, friends, God is in a good mood. God is in a good mood, and he loves you. He's not waiting to strike you. He's waiting to transform you. He's got something better. He's got something great. You might have grew up in a house 
where uh, people denigrated you, called you stupid, called you names, say you'll never amount to anything. When you made a mistake, they just hopped on your back and rode you to the post office. I mean, they just, they just denigrated you. But let me tell you, your heavenly Father is not waiting to yell at you, to scream at you, to denigrate you, to call you names anytime that you mess, mess up. He's waiting to say, I believe in you. You can do better. I'm with you. I know your potential. I see your potential. I put life in you. I breathe life in you. I see, I see something better for you. You don't have to let your failures define you. You let the cross define you. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's glory in being transformed. There is power in letting Jesus transform you. It doesn't matter where you come from. That your past is your testimony, and it's wonderful, but it doesn't define you. Jesus defines you. His image in you defines you. Your choice to follow Jesus defines you. Friends, it is good news. It's glad tidings. There is transformation available to you because of what Jesus did on the cross. It is a faith thing. If you believe God, you can be transformed. Hallelujah. Praise God. So today, I want to challenge you to embrace the transformation that God is calling you into. I want you to close your ears to the lies that have been spoken over you. I want you to close your ears, turn your back to the lies that say you're only this, you're a label. You're, you're a drug addict, you're a gossip, you're a backbiter, you're a, a fornicator, you're an adulterer. You hand those labels over to Jesus and he gives you another label and it's called the child of God. Trade in your label of shame and guilt and receive the label child of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is a great day. Today is a good day. We are one step away from being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. What's the step? It's belief. It's a faith thing. It's believing what God did for you on the cross and what he did rising from the dead applies to you. The Bible says that the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You have resurrection power. What does that mean? You can be transformed. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to to settle for where you are. God doesn't want you to settle. He wants you to come up higher. Come up higher. Don't settle for second best. Don't settle for a, a B plus. God has given you everything you need to triumph. The the the. Apostle Paul wrote in uh, Romans 8.31, we already referenced it. He said, if God is for us, who can be against us? This is a declarative statement. This is a declaration. What can separate us from the love of God, he said before? Nothing. Not height, not depth, not angels, nor demons, nor things present, nor things to come. Not, Not anything can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So, if God is for us... Who can be against us? Friends, God has called us higher. God is calling us to transformation. You can do it. Why? Because God is for you. You can't do it in your own strength. No. You can't try hard enough. You can't will it hard hard enough. But in God, in Christ Jesus, you can be changed. Hallelujah. Praise God. So today, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You might not know what's next if you take this step of faith. You might uh, not know what's ahead of you. You might not know what God is going to ask you to do. But let me tell you this morning, friends, do not be afraid. I want to read over you this morning what Moses said to Joshua. I'm going to read it again. 
Take this to heart. Look at me, friends. It is God who goes before you. It is the Lord. It is the covenant-keeping God who goes before you. And He will be with you. He will be with you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Men might have abandoned you. Friends, family, maybe have abandoned you. They may have not believed in you. But God will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. God is for you. Hallelujah. He has a promise that he wants to call out of you. He has placed in you gifts and talents that he is just waiting to applaud over you. And he just wants to say, I knew you could do it. I believed in you the whole time. That's why I placed the, those gifts there. Man, I love you. Zephaniah 3.17 says, He rejoices over us with singing. God is proud of you, and He's waiting for you to stand up and allow the transformation that happens when we come to faith in Jesus, when we believe the Word of God. God has something better for you, and he wants to speak life over you. Praise God. Let's close our eyes this morning. You're here this morning, and you have had a cloud of doubt, a cloud of guilt, a cloud of shame over your life. Maybe somebody's spoken something over you that's caused a cloud to just come over your head, over your life. Friends, God wants to lift that up from you right now. He wants to take that cloud of guilt, that cloud of shame from over your life, and He wants to bring transformational change. He wants to speak life into you. You're here this morning, you've already made things right with the Lord, but there's still this cloud, this guilt, this shame, this misunderstanding, not knowing what to do. But you want that gone this morning. You want that transformational change to happen in your life so you can walk in victory. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? Say, that's me. I need to be rid of this. See your hands all over the room. You can put it down. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you speak life. I thank you that if you are for us, there's nothing that can be against us. I just sense in the room this morning that we need some hope. That hope needs to arise. God, I pray that hope would be palpable in this room. That it would be tangible. That we would feel the arms of Jesus wrapping around us and say, I believe in you. I love you. With me, transformation will happen. Thank you, Lord. With that head still bowed and eyes closed, you're here and you have not made a decision to follow Jesus. You're just living life your own way, the best you know how. But you need a relationship with Jesus. You need your sins to be forgiven. We believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day so that we could have the ultimate transformational change from death to life and be able to go to heaven. If you're here this morning and you need to make a decision for Jesus, to follow Jesus, would you raise your hand this morning? Waiting, I see your hand, you can put it down. Anybody else waiting just for a moment? I see your hand, you can put it down. Let's pray. Would you repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you 
for loving me. I thank you for being on my side. When I was still an enemy of yours, you loved me and you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. And you raised him from the dead for me. Thank you. I believe what Jesus did was for me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or the hundredth time, we have a a special book for you to help you on your walk with the Lord. This is just the beginning. There's so much more in Jesus. We want to help you uh, in your walk with the Lord. But this morning, I just want to encourage you. God's in a good mood. He loves you. He's not waiting to strike you. He's waiting to transform you. Isn't that awesome? He doesn't want to leave you where you are. He wants you to be like Jesus. And he wants to create in you that image. Could we stand this morning? Lord, I just want to bless these folks. I just thank you for them. I bless them with the peace and mercy of God, with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You have been good to us, Lord, and I pray that your goodness would continue to flow over each one. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Go with God, and he will go with you.